In today's video, I'm gonna be talking you through my top five things that annoy me as a nightclub DJ here in the UK. Now, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love DJing. I think playing music and entertaining a crowd is one of the best jobs in the world, but just like any other job, there are, of course, frustrations that come with it. So I'm gonna talk you through my top five things that annoy me as a nightclub DJ. Let's get straight into it. Now, I am talking with these five points about the commercial or mainstream high street nightclubs. That is a sector that I work within. I cannot talk to you about frustrations about being a mobile DJ, a pub DJ, or as an artist at a festival, because that is not me. These things only refer to the high street mainstream nightclubs. Point number one is the nightclubs that do not supply DJs with equipment. I'm talking about CDJs and a mixer. I personally believe that high street nightclubs or any nightclub where the core business is providing DJ style entertainment, so loud music, lighting, and DJ entertainment should supply their DJs with CDJs and a mixer. So you can go in, you can plug in, you can play, you do your job, and that is the end of it. Now, this has certainly been an increasing problem through the years here in the UK, and I do think technology and other DJs are slightly to blame for this because many DJs like to take their own equipment, they like to take a controller with them, which is of course an all-in-one unit, and DJs like to DJ on different equipment. Some people like Denon, some people like Pioneer, some people love CDJs. So there's so many different types of equipment out there, and this causes a bit of a problem because if a DJ doesn't want to use CDJs and they bring their controller, then what is the point of a nightclub in providing the CDJs in the mixer. Now, my personal opinion is that if you are a professional DJ, you should be able to use CDJs and a mixer and they should be supplied to you. I get that not all clubs maintain their equipment, we'll come on to that in a little bit later, but yeah, I think CDJs and a mixer should be supplied for you in good working order and the DJ that is hired should be able to plug in and play and use the CDJs. Much like when you go to a festival, if you're an artist, you plug in and play to the CDJs. Yes, I know with festivals, the artist can supply a bit of a rider and that is provided to you. But similarly, if you work in an office or you work in a supermarket, if you're in an office job, for example, the company will supply you with a laptop, an email address, all of the stuff that you need in order to do your job. Similarly, if you work in, say, a supermarket like Sainsbury's or Tesco's, you don't have to bring your own till system in order to sell the products. The tills are provided for you. So the tools in order for you to do your job are provided. And I think nightclubs should be providing DJs with the equipment in order to do the job. That is my personal opinion. Let me know if your opinion differs in the comments down below. I do have some sympathy with pubs, bars, etc., that where their core business is not loud music, DJ style entertainment. But for nightclubs, they certainly should be providing all of that kit for you. Frustration number two then is nightclubs that are not maintained to a good standard. Now this extends to the equipment that is in place in a nightclub. Of course, like the CDJs and the mixer is a common thing that is not that well maintained, hence why a lot of DJs bring their own equipment into these venues to use. However, I feel that if DJs are willing to bring their own equipment, there is no incentive for the nightclub to maintain their DJ equipment. So it's a little bit of a, a kind of a vicious circle. But I can't stand it when a nightclub, bear in mind, customers are paying for entry and the core business is loud music and DJ entertainment. So music is their, their business and like the amps are poorly maintained, leading to outages, which means that the sound system sounds bad, or like the amps not being in a well, like ventilated room, for example. Come on, like your core business <laughs> is built on music. So surely you need to protect the sound system, the amps and maintain that equipment, like as if it's, because it is like the biggest asset in the venue. Same goes for lighting. The amount of clubs that I've gone to and like half the lights don't work because they just haven't replaced 
like the, the lamps in them. And I know that we're on LED technology now, but like the DMX is broken or it hasn't been maintained or the, the fans are clogged, so they overheat and they just break. It, it's, it's absolute madness. So I think poorly maintained equipment and just a poorly maintained venue it really does frustrate me, especially as customers with a nightclub compared to like some of the bars out there, you have to pay to get in. And so you need to, if you're paying, I think you're paying for an element of experience. So poor maintenance of venues, including equipment and the venue overall is definitely something that frustrates me. I'm definitely someone that likes high standards and I feel like I like to work in a nice environment and some of the venues that I've worked in, certainly you walk in, and you think, oh my God, like what is going on here? It looks absolutely dreadful. And yeah, customers may not notice like subtle things like one disco light not working or the smoke machine being broken or whatever. But I think over time, these things certainly snowball. And then before you know it, you've got a venue that looks absolutely dreadful. And people would probably rather pay nothing to get in for the pub over the road that also has a DJM. Just my opinion, let me know your thoughts down in the comments down below on that one. Moving on then to point number three, and it is more of a customer based one, and that is people, for some reason in the 2020s and probably a little bit before that, since these have kind of really become like mass market, they don't talk to you anymore. People literally, when they want a song, they go, can I request a song? And I'm like, yeah. And then I think they're gonna say something. And then the next thing you know, you get a phone shoved in your face with the name of the song. Like, I, I, it really angers me. <laughs> like, I haven't got anger problems, I swear, but it just really frustrates me. If you've opened your mouth to ask if I take a request, then just continue to tell me the song. I don't mind you looking up the song on your phone and then telling me. But just tell me the song. Don't just shove the phone in my face. Like, it's just rude. Like, just speak to me. Like, we're all humans. Speak. I feel like the art of conversation is dying. And I don't know. I know it's easy to, like, wave your phone about or wave a Spotify playlist about. But just, just have the common decency to, like, ask for the song. I get it's loud and everything. But, yeah, just, just talk. Frustration number four, then. And this is venues with the toilets located or the restrooms if you're in America located far away from the DJ booth now obviously this can't be changed I'm probably sounding like a right diva here but there is nothing worse than having to battle through the crowd when you need to go to the loo like battle through the crowd go really far away from the DJ booth and then try and rush back in time for the next song. Like, I absolutely hate it. It gives me, like, anxiety, like, absolutely no tomorrow. I am quite lucky in the venues that I work in that I can always get security to come over or a manager to come over and cover the DJ booth so, like, no one jumps in. In my current Friday residency, I, I'm not even joking, I have to fight through the crowd, go up three flights of stairs. The toilets aren't even that big, so I potentially have to queue to go to the loo obviously go to the loo, then fight my way back downstairs through the crowd again, because the DJ booth is right at the back of the room as well, all in time for the next song. And yeah, you can put like a, like a longer song on or whatever, but it's just not an ideal situation. And it's something that really frustrates me. I've definitely got a knack for holding on for as long as possible before I need to go. Probably too much information there, but yeah, that's point number four. And then finally, frustration number five is staff on a night off and on a night out with that night off in the venue which you are working in. Because obviously, they normally work in that venue, so they already know who you are. But I swear to God, when staff have a night off and they're spending their night off in your venue, they seem to think that you as the DJ are like their own private DJ that's going to give them everything that they want. I could be playing in a house room and like the, the staff come up to me, they've had a few lemonades, so obviously a little bit worse for wear, and they're like, oh, play Taylor Swift or, or play something different to what you're playing. I'm like, no, just because you're here on a night out doesn't mean that the music policy changes just for you. Like, it, it is a frustration, and you have to kind of be quite sensitive to how you address this situation because... Normal customers, you can just kind of say no, but then obviously depending on how senior that member of staff is, it could potentially have repercussions for you 
on future sets. So you have to tread quite carefully with this one, but oh my God, it's frustrating when you have staff that genuinely think that, well, because they're on a night out and they know you more than, you know, the customers know you, that you are going to basically put on a private show, do all of their shout outs, play every one of their song requests, play it next for them. Like, it's just an absolute recipe for disaster, in my opinion. There we have it, my top five frustrations when working as a mainstream nightclub DJ here in the UK. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments down below. If you made it this far, please do give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.